Sometimes I need to handle tiny parts. We all do, and our eyes aren't getting any better. This board will need soldering, and the chip that goes here is just 0.8 millimeters wide. I've been using this rather good microscope from Tumlove, and it's really rather good. The image quality has been great and allowed me to do lots of really tiny repairs. But unfortunately the fixed space is just too small for inspecting larger boards and devices. This is pretty much the biggest board you can put under here and comfortably get to every component. Anything bigger? And I'm afraid it's a no-go. So when Tom Love offered me this new microscope with a flexible base, I jumped at the chance. The 4K is because the sensor's 4K, a big leap from the old one. Flex here means it's got a flexible arm, allowing much larger subjects. And the AF stands for autofocus, something I'm quite excited by. So let's take a look at this new tool and see if it's useful for us fixers. Right now. Mark fixes stuff. Usually this would be the part where I went through the box and take everything out, but no, I've unboxed it to save time. Everything was well packed inside the box and everything seems quite robust. I think we'll put it together and see how it works. If I was going to install this permanently, I'd probably screw the plate to the side of my workbench. My bench is unusual and a bit too thick for the clamp. But because I need to move out of this space, I'm going to install this on my streaming PC table. Be aware that this table is a bit wobbly, so microscope output might look a bit shaky. Oh, and the new microscope also comes with a silicon mat, which is really nice. I've got a couple of these and they're really useful. Mat attack. The attack is highly effective. So the advantage of this new microscope is when I do my upcoming video on my SMD soldering techniques, I'll be able to capture the HDMI output directly into my streaming PC and record it using OBS, giving me another source for creating content. Okay, let's put this together. These need to be screwed together first. This fits over the bracket I think it's decorative. There is a locating pin other than the bolt hole. And this pops on there. I guess all I do now is pop the bolt through the bottom. And of course, we'll tighten it up. Let's do this up nice and tight because the table is going to be wobbly enough on its own. And I think that will do. Dead easy. I'm not sure if this is a mounting pole or a medieval weapon. Next we can take a look at the flex arm. This actually has quite a lot of reach. It's equipped with a couple of cable tidies and along one end we've got what we call a clamping sleeve. The flex arm slides over the mounting pole and tightens with the clamping sleeve. We can fix it in any position. This is used for making large scale adjustments to the height of the microscope. With the arm attached and fixed in position, it's time to look at the microscope end of the arm. There's a couple of directions of adjustment and a threaded hole for mounting our microscope jig. This black wheel is for locking the position of the microscope jig, so you can get your microscope in the right position. The jig just screws in underneath and then locks off with the tensioning collar. And that should stop it rotating whilst we're using it. Also in the box is a handy dandy cable grip. Well, I'm not sure if that's what it's called. Call it what you like, but I like these. 
we have another degree of adjustment on the scope with these gears. There's also a locking knob on the back. With the main arm assembled, it's time to put our microscope unit actually into position. By easing these off or tightening them up, we can grip our microscope unit. I'm getting quite excited now because it might be true that size doesn't matter. Sliding our unit into the hole, we then make it nice and tight. I'm not over tightening, but I don't want it to move. The ring light attaches in a similar manner. The instructions say to fix this below the red line on the scope, below the buttons. Very firm. Now with our unit fully assembled, we're wobbly bench bound. Please excuse the mess, I'm actually in the throes of packing all this room away. The microscope easily clamps to this standard table. And there we have it, a nice reach on an admittedly wobbly table. Of course, when working normally, vibrations wouldn't usually matter, but when you're filming them, they do seem to stand out. I think cable management like this is a real quality of life improvement, so I'm pleased to see it being incorporated into this model. I'll hold off on doing the other one until we've got a few more wires installed on the scope. This unit came direct from the manufacturer in China for review, so unfortunately I've got a two-prong plug. I've powered it using this international power strip, but do bear in mind it's worldwide voltage tolerant anyway. The main microscope unit has some LEDs built in, but because they're close to the sensor, they're prone to reflective glare off of shiny surfaces, such as circuit boards. Bad news for us. The ring light provides less harsh indirect lighting, and I'll show the differences later. For my first tests, I'll just use the ambient lighting in the room. There's a built-in battery. I'm not sure why this is useful when the product is mounted this way, but in its portable stand incarnation, it's probably a nice thing. Along the back, there's a few ports and slots. First, there's a mini HDMI port that will output 4K video. A mini HDMI to full-size HDMI cable is provided. Unfortunately, it's not quite long enough to reach my capture card, so I'll be using this adapter and a standard HDMI cable. That should be nice and flexible for the future as well. Of all the cables I have in my box, mini HDMI is the one that I can never seem to find when I need it. The unit can take still pictures or record videos to micro SD. If I'm honest, I'm always dubious about the ability of units like this to record quality footage. It is nice that the memory card is included though. Although it's in one of those slots, you have to have fingernails like Cruella de Vil to get the card in and out. There's a USB-C socket which is used for charging up and powering the microscope. The USB socket can also be used to connect to a PC or Mac to use the microscope as a mass storage device or a webcam style UVC source. I'll be using the socket on my power strip instead of the supplied charger. Because this machine came straight from China, I'm afraid I got this power supply. When you order in your territory, you'll get the right power supply for your unit. This does feel like a good quality power supply with the associated heft that you get with decent electronics. That being said, I won't be using it, so I'm going to put it safely with my Lemmings collection. Luckily, there's a bit of space since I got rid of my Bob Ross jelly kit. And there it is, nestling with my most prized possessions. Ah. Joking aside, I'll recycle this in an appropriate manner for electrical items. As a video creator, I'm excited to see how this USB connection could be used for creating content in future videos. Obviously, the hook here is I'm trying to get you to watch some more of my videos that I produce after this one, so uh, no spoilers. There's also a 5 volt output, which is used for powering accessories such as extra lights and things like that. Not much use to me, to be honest. 
Nice to have though. With our cables plugged in and our wiring all wired, it's time to route it all together. I love spending an afternoon simply routing. I think it looks great. Seriously. Autofocus is very good and the capacitive button is very snappy. And this is just with the light in the room. The P1 and P2 buttons are for focal presets. When you're focused, you simply long press one of them and it will store that focal length in the memory. Let's defocus the microscope so we can test our preset. Okay, that's definitely out of focus. Pressing P1 and it snaps straight back to focus without hunting for autofocus. There's also manual focus buttons which work well for fine tuning. On my old microscope, I had to use the knobs to move the scope up and down. Below the screen, we have the power button. The remote can't power the unit on, only off, so this button's kind of important. There's an OK button which can enter and switch modes depending on what you're doing. On the main screen, it takes a still image. The right and left buttons are for digitally zooming in and out. And I'm actually surprised at just how good the digital zoom is. It transitions smoothly and it's not digitally noisy. The scope's internal LED lights are controlled using this capacitive strip. This is great for matte subjects, but unfortunately working on circuit boards, it can create quite a lot of glare, which is actually quite good for finding solder bridges, but not much else. It's so bright. You're not going to the light, Carolyn. Turn away. <clears throat> anyway, useful, but not for circuit boards. It might be obvious to say, but because we had to bolt it on and power it separately, the ring light operates on its own controls and it gives a much nicer quality of light. This is going to be absolutely superb when I do my soldering videos. So uh, don't forget to watch them. I'd like to think that the remote control is pretty self-explanatory. It offers easy access to take pictures and record, although hilariously, the IR code that the right button sends turns my TV off. Okay, let's have a general look around with the microscope. I'll be concentrating on PCBs for this bit because, well, that's what I do. Moving the PCB around, the image looks nice and smooth with little to no noise or motion judder. This is with the ring light. We're nowhere near the maximum zoom, but this is the kind of magnification I'll be using for SMD soldering. Again, the internal LEDs look harsher, but they're something I use for picking out those solder bridges and it's also great for spotting things like broken tracks. Not an issue on this brand new PCB, but you get the drift. For populated PCBs, manually focusing or auto-focusing will still get fairly tiring quickly. And that's where constant auto-focus mode comes in. By long pressing the AF button, the scope is set into constant auto-focus mode. That means even with populated PCBs with lots of components, you can whiz around and the focus is automatically taken care of. A real time saver. Autofocus seems to work on scene change detection, so when it sees something different, it hunts for the highest point of contrast and focuses on that point. I found this mode to be incredibly useful. This is a board that I did with the old scope, and I can see that I made a boo-boo down here. Least said about that, the better though. So, what are my final thoughts? It's a really good tool for the price and a nice upgrade for the channel. It's a big thumbs up from me. Big thanks to Tom Love for the scope. I'll finally be able to do some videos on how I do fine pitch SMD soldering. Big thanks to my patrons as well, appearing on the screen right now. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron, visit www.patreon.com forward slash stuff. You'll get ad-free early access to all my videos, access to the exclusive Discord chat room, and you'll get occasional insights into my life, whether you want them or not. Patrons will also get the ability to handbrake skid into a parking space of any size. That might not be true.
Ah, well, thanks for watching. I'm really, really appreciative of all your support. Why don't you go and watch one of these other videos? Go on, off you pop.